This blade right here is the one that started it all. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and welcome to the first video in this mini series called Lockdown Knife Week. If you don't know what this is about, I will leave a link for the video right up there explaining everything and we're gonna go straight to the hashtags right away. I actually reached out to the Patreon squad over on my exclusive Discord and we have an entry here from Big Hands 66 Here he has a ZT0055 hidden flipper. I actually only have one ZT in my collection, which I will get around to sometime this week. You guys will see a video on that. But that is a pretty cool looking design. I really don't have anything with a blade shape like that. Hidden flipper, also a very cool touch. And maybe that is something that I will have to check out here sometime in the future. So today, of course, we are talking about the knife that started it all. This one has probably made an appearance a few times on my channel and on other people's channels as well. I had a few pocket knives as a kid growing up. I don't know where I even got a hold of them, but this is the knife that I first bought that really put the whole EDC concept into my mind. After I got this thing and started carrying it, that's what sort of tipped me over the edge to explore into this knife world and then fast forward like, I don't even know how many years it's been, maybe 10 years. I've got this whole collection in front of me now. This one still has a soft spot in my heart. Some of you may laugh at it because it is a cheap knife that you can buy at Walmart. However, everyone has that one knife. So this is it. Let's take a look at the Gerber Paraframe. Because of the price point on this thing, I really don't have a single bad thing to say about this. Again, I might be biased because this was the first knife that got me into knife collecting in the first place, but at around 15 bucks, which is what I believe I paid for this at Walmart, you really can't go wrong with it. The Paraframe has a clip point blade, bead blast finish with a handle length of four inches, a blade length of three inches, bringing the overall length up to seven inches. It is a pretty small knife, all completely made out of a pretty cheap stainless steel. It's coming in at 2.6 ounces, the pocket clip is not reversible at all, and it is in the right-handed tip-down configuration. This is the first gen thumb stud version, and there are also some newer Paraframe 2 versions out there. And they come in a bunch of different colors. You can get a blade with a nail nick in it as well as serrations. Now it really doesn't get more simple than this right here. In the price point between like 10 and $20, I really don't see any other knives out there that actually can compete with this thing. Again, I'm probably pretty biased because I have a soft spot for this knife, but I just love this thing a lot. What drew me to it initially was probably the weight and the skeletonized handles on here. It's got a really cool look to it. You can actually see the blade through the handles there, and it is a frame lock design. It is a relatively small knife. It sort of disappears in your pocket and in your hand as well, but that is what's good about an EDC knife. It goes relatively unnoticed in your pocket, but that three inch cutting edge on there is great for almost every EDC tab. Let's head to the workbench now for a top-down view, a little bit of a closer look at this blade, and then we'll also throw some comparisons into the mix. So here's a quick story time of this blade and why I like it so much. Again, I bought this like way back when I was in college and I saw a friend of mine who had one and I was like, it's kind of cool. I like the weight to it. It's got a good shape. At the time, I really wasn't into knives like carrying them every single day, but I was working a job where Carrying a knife would be super useful. During my summers in between college, I was working for an IT company and I would basically do setups and installs. I was opening thousands and thousands of boxes to set up new laptops and desktop computers for school districts all across my state. Now at the time, I was just using box cutters, but this obviously makes a lot more sense and especially now that I'm into knives. I couldn't believe that I was doing a job like that for so long and I didn't carry a dedicated blade in my pocket. So. That basically led me to buying this and eventually falling in love with it. After I caught the knife bug, I bought a ton of other blades and I was using them kind of off and on here and there. I would swap out blades in my EDC like I do now. However, this one I carried for probably two years straight and I use this thing more than any other knife in my collection. It's kind of crazy because the blade has held up really well. This is just a cheap stainless steel blade and of course I did have to sort of sharpen it up and reprofile it over the years. 
but the pair frame is still in really good shape today. It has some nylon washers on the inside. The action of it actually smoothed up the more I used it, just like most knives will. And check out the centering on this thing. It is still almost perfect even to today. I really don't take this thing apart or do a whole lot of knife maintenance with it because I don't carry it anymore. But this thing has served me super well, especially given the price point. Now I'll pull in some other blades for comparison, however, they're not really in the same ballpark because nothing else in my collection is quite as cheap as this. However, we have things similar in size. Right here I have the Browse Blades Spectre. I have done a video on this in the past. This one never really saw any pocket time. It is sort of a cool collector's piece though. This was a limited run number 388 out of 500 in their American line, I believe is what this one was. Still a pretty neat blade, nice and tame as far as browse blades go, and it is very similar to the size of the Gerber. Another one also very similar in size here, we have the Blade HQ exclusive all black Benchmade bug out. This is obviously coming in a lot more expensive than the Gerber. I marked up the blade on this one pretty good, oops. And with something like this, you're paying around $100 probably right now. S30V blade on here, you got that grievery, grivery handles, don't really care for that. And then you have the access lock, deep carry pocket clip. This knife is definitely a league above something like this. However, I think they're still pretty comparable. Along those same lines of smaller lightweight knives, we of course have the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. I love this blade, full flat grind, good steel on here. Again, with the sort of plasticky feeling handles, I actually prefer this over the bug out, but wire pocket clip, again, it's going to be a lot more expensive than something like this, but overall you're getting just a little bit better of a knife. You got a compression lock on this one, and I have done a video on this one as well. And then finally, basically light years above the pair frame, I gotta give an honorable mention to the Protec TR5. This is another one where I have a video on the channel and it's an auto knife, good pocket clip. Can't say enough good things about this. It is similar in size to the pair frame. It's probably just a little bit longer than most of the other blades out here, but still pretty comparable. The paraframe is definitely the thinnest out of all of these blades and like I said I'm not going to knock it for anything really because it's just so cheap. It's a great blade for the price point and if I had to do it again I would absolutely buy another one. So that's all for my overview on the Gerber paraframe. Again I love this knife to death. I don't think I will ever sell it or get rid of it from my collection. What am I going to get for it? It was only 10 bucks when I bought it new. So this one will forever have a spot, in this case, right there up front. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you guys wanna see next. Of course, I am gonna go through quite a bit of the knives in my collection. However, maybe there is something more specific that you want to see about a knife that I've already taken a look at. If you have any good ideas, I can probably make that stuff happen. Don't forget to use the hashtag LockdownKnifeWeek over on Instagram. I'm gonna be scrolling through that hashtag to find photos of yours to feature in the future. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and that's going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you in the next one.